Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Learning Two and another virtual thread. We're really excited to have this panel of uh, admission professionals from International School to kind of explore and discuss with Nancy uh, Scucciarini, who is the Head of Community Relations at the International School of Luxembourg, who will be facilitating this conversation. So I'm going to turn it over to her and uh, let's start. Over to you, Nancy. Thank you, John. Hi, everybody. I am, I feel really honored to be, first of all, part of this Learning Two thread. The second reason I'm so honored is the four people here actually have had such an impact on my own professional growth. So between Laura helping me get the job, David Willis being so kind, Henrietta being part of our team, and then Tina, who is one of the first admissions officers here. I feel like we should have a little love fest before we begin, <laughs> but I won't right now, I won't. I'm just gonna go right into the uh, introducing them. So I'm gonna ask each one of them to uh, present themselves, their role, their school name, uh, their school population, and the country they're from. So I'm gonna start with David, please. Hi, Nancy, and um, <clears throat> thanks for that nice introduction. So I'm David Willows. Um, I am the Director of Advancement at the Inter International School of Brussels. I've been working there since 2005. Um, ISB is a school of uh, 1,350 students. Um, what other information did you want, Nancy? Was that Country, it? Brussels. In case they don't know where Brussels is, they should, because we're very smart international educators, but just in case. In a small country called Belgium. Perfect. Uh, Wonderful. Next we have uh, Laura. Yeah, hi. And uh, like David said, Nancy, thank you so much for uh, inviting me to take part today. Um, so I am, I, my role is Head of Admissions at the International School of Zulu Lucern. Uh, we have 1,250 students. We uh, serve the needs of students between the ages of 3 and 18. We are uh, situated in Switzerland and I've held this role. Uh, I've oversee had an oversight of admissions for 10 years now, but previously I was Director of Advancement as well. And Henrietta? Yeah, hi there. I am, my name is Henrietta Rosenquist and um, I'm coming in from the International School of Luxembourg and um, are having the, the pleasure of working with Nancy as well uh, on a daily basis. Um, we have uh, around 1,390 students and as well we serve from preschool till grade 12. Um, I have been at the school since 2000 nine i suddenly thought oh, wow is that really true but yes and um i have uh, been head of admissions for the last uh, or the past five years and tina is tina here i didn't even see tina yet i am wondering if she's having some challenges with connecting because uh. she was just trying to to uh call me and it sounds like that i mean it doesn't even go through uh, she okay. might She's in China, she might be having. We'll wait because I think she's texting me. Okay, so thank you for the introductions. And now we're going to move on to the first question. And the first question, actually, I have to give um, acknowledgement to Notosh and Ewan because he presented this protocol to the community relations team for us to reflect on our current practices. So the question, I'm going to start off with David, then move to Laura, then to Henrietta. And the question is this. Mm -hmm. um, I'll let it up here. When reflecting on our current um, admission practices and in light of COVID-19, what practices would you amplify? Which practices would you change? And which practices would you ditch in terms of our current situation? So I'm gonna start off with David. How would you respond? Sounds very much like an interview question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, David, tell me. Tell me more, David. We want the real truth. I, um, when, 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 when I saw that question come through, um, I, was, I was thinking, I hope I'm not first. <laughs> uh, because, because I could perhaps use the opportunity to copy and build on what's <laughs> So, so, so my next thought was, um, actually, I'm a big fan of the musical um, Hamilton. And at the beginning of that, 
narrative, if you've seen the musical, there's a, there's a song in which um, Aaron Burr gives some advice to Alexander Hamilton, who is this, you know, young upstart at the time. And, and he says, uh, uh, talk less and smile more. And, and, and actually, that's, that would be how I would answer this question of Ewan McIntosh. Um, I wouldn't be saying that to Ewan, just to be clear, if this is being recorded and he's watching it. But, but I would be saying, I, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering about, as we think about our role in admissions, about how much we have become uh, dependent or defined our role as, as people who are talking, giving information, um, people who feel like we have to explain the mission of our schools. And, and, and in a sense, we're like walking dictionaries to prospective families. Um, and, and probably those of us who are doing these jobs, we're in the jobs because we like to talk. And, and I think one of the situations um, or the learnings I've had over the last few months has really confirmed to me that, that there is something about admissions which is about talking less. It's about listening. It's about being open to not just the story that we want to tell, but the story that the family wants to tell about themselves. And, and I think, why is this now? Um, why, why maybe am I thinking about, you know, that the role of the admissions person as smiling more, I actually think there's something there about the admissions person being someone who is um, in a sense able to absorb and listen and accept and acknowledge all of the trauma and, of, of families in transition and particularly in these moments um, and to recognize that and become a, a space where families can feel like um, they've been heard their anxieties have been heard and so on. Um, and, and, and I actually think that that, you know, many of you know I've talked about admissions as an act of institutional kindness. And I think Aaron Burr's example or, or advice to Alexander Hamilton maybe is something that captures that. So that's how I'd answer that question um, as a starter for 10. Nancy, you need to unmute. You know that by now, I'm on these all the time. You just forget. Laura, how would you respond as a follow-up to what David was saying in terms? Yeah, I, I'm talking perhaps a more sort of practical terms about, about the situation we found ourselves in as a school, as a department, when we went into to the lockdown situation. Um, a lot of what we do at our school, we actually reflecting on what David said, we, we offer... I think a very personalized approach to the admissions process. So I always start with every family from, from with the question, what brings you here today and how can I best serve you your time? Um, when we went into the lockdown situation, uh, we suddenly thought, okay, how are we going to obviously take the same approach in a virtual environment? So we can no longer do tours and everything I think we did in our admissions team was about personalizing that piece. Um, so how are we going to bridge the gap now that we can no longer sit down with families for an hour in a room, we can no longer take them on tours and let them just soak up the atmosphere of the school. Um, so we very quickly realized, although we had a great website, uh, although we had some useful videos, etc we actually were really lacking in the area of our marketing and communications toolbox. And what we were lacking in, we had a lot of these sort of big picture pieces, but some really nice sort of uh, interactive pieces specifically to certain, like every grade level. We didn't have, for example, an early years, two minute sort of video about early years that really captured early years or, or, or you know, grade one, grade two, grade three. So then we set about thinking, okay, how are we going to change that? And we, we, you know, we, we, we started making some videos and we said, oh, we can just put these on our website. But then again, what we realized is that's not enough either. So basically we had to get down to personalizing 
every video we made, so we cut one video for each grade level, but then depending upon the family we were meeting with, we would say, you know, hi, family Morrison, welcome, Abby, welcome, Gabby, because we realized, you know, that the thing that we feel we do particularly well, and I, and I think all great admissions people should feel the same thing, is to be able to connect to people, um, really connect with people individually. And it's not just the same tour, the same conversation for everybody. So Amplify, we had to look to Amplify um, the virtual experience, but at, but at the same time ensuring that it still uh, felt authentic, uh, individualized, um, because I think those are the two things which set schools apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Change, interestingly enough, I don't say there's a huge amount that we would change, but what we would change, what this has shown us, is actually we can change how we work. We can change yes. how we work as a team. Mm -hmm. Do we need to be sitting in the office? Does everybody have to be in the office from mm -hmm. eight till five, even if we're on full time contracts? So I think, you know, as a team, we've become more fluid in the way that we work. And that is something I would like to continue as a team leader to encourage my team members to, to have more freedom with how they work, because as long as it's working, it's working. Um, and ditch, we haven't got to that part yet, actually. <laughs> we, we are, we are, we, when the craziness of the last six months is over, perhaps sometime in the autumn, we will sit down and do a complete sort of debrief into, into mm. a period of time and at that point we might look at what we what we're going to ditch but definitely mm. amplify and change we thought about those two pieces you were able to do it during the process mm. and Henrietta thank you yes Laura. yeah I actually will say that I um I'm probably very much down the line of Laura in in the thinking hello Tina um good to see you um as we just to think about what to amplify, maybe more about the, the process and um, how the school handled it uh, up front. Um, immediately already in February, the school set down a crisis team, uh, comprising of the, you know, the school director, law school, upper school principal, Nancy, head of communication, IT, John, head of security to put up structures as to how to move forward and, and work our way through this, uh, this crisis that we understood was ahead of us. And I think that um, that offered an enormous support to the school, uh, to, to the staff, and that um, had that not been in place, I'm not sure it has been so successful how I feel we've actually, we, well, we're not completely through, but where we are today. Mm. Uh, the school followed its its say its missions, its values about looking at us all as a family and supporting everybody in school. Number one was to see how can we best support our staff. Of course, our families, mm. of course, the learning are other pillars in this, but just to make sure that we all that there was a common understanding that everybody needed support to make this mm. a success. That we came up on the other end. And that led us, I would say, to within my team, I've realized exactly as you said, Laura, the flexibility, allowing new ways of working, um, uh, gave us amazing results as to we, we solved the, the things we, we, we were supposed to do. We could still serve our applicant families. We could continue mm -hmm. within the interviews. We could, um, work um, as we were used to but it allowed also families with children everybody could just do what they were supposed to do in a successful manner and i think mm. that's important to amplify that the school actually succeeded in this i feel mm. uh, in, in on many different layers um what were, we would was it ch change again change i mean that comes out of what was amplified i will definitely change that we I, that we can be supportive as a, as a team leader as to what works for my team. Um, because I've definitely seen that they then, they do their best and it does it serve them to work a bit in the morning, later in the evening, but in the afternoon you need to take care of your children. Well, if, it, if we then at the end receive the same result, well, 
we're fine with that, and that has been great. Of course, there have been challenges along the way, which are, you know, exactly, we haven't yet decided what are we going to ditch, um, but definitely we saw some processes that made it difficult uh, uh, because of databases that you use, different applications that, that could do uh, the work more challenging. But um, so these are probably things we'll then move into, say, ditching or realizing that we need to change our process in that. Lovely. Thank you. I think that's it. And we have to introduce Tina Herman. She's our fourth person joining the panel, and she's from Beijing. Tina, say hello. First of all, introduce your school, where you're from. So good to see you. Okay, so apologies. I was so looking forward to seeing all of my past friends and colleagues, and that I am uh, an ISL professional alum. <laughs> I'm so excited to be invited here. I just, sorry, I came late to the party. It's just one more example of how in practice, how practicing grace under pressure in these times <laughs> is really important. Um, so thanks. It, it was a team committee that got me to, through to the, the Zoom room. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, so I'm not sure if it's also time for me to kind of launch into. Yes, please. Thank you. All right, so apologies, I'm not sure what was been, has been said before, but I'm Tina Herman. I'm currently the Director of Admissions at uh, International School of Beijing, one of two ISBs that are present here on our Zoom uh, panel. Um, I've been there for five years. Um, we have had a very interesting go. This is, this is uh, sorry, we're a school of 1,800 students all of whom are meant to be foreign nationals, if not hold green cards uh, in the spirit of them having lived internationally and in a need of having a English speaking westernized education back in um, mainland China. Um, we have had a bumpy ride. This is week 19 of online learning for our community. Wow. And, um, not only has that been quite tiring and challenging for us as, as a, con a community for all constituencies, um, it's been particularly challenging in that we were on Chinese New Year when the school year, when, when mm -hmm. the, the Wuhan, uh, we caught wind of, of things happening in Wuhan. And um, at the moment, two thirds of our faculty are out of country and 40% uh -huh. of our families. So, it's been quite challenging to not be able to present ourselves um, uh, with synchronous learning. We have office hours that are only about three hours a day where we all agree that we're going to, to overlap with one another in multiple time zones. Um, this is our last school week and it's only been since the, the final weeks in May that slowly, grade by grade, the Chinese government has allowed us to return to school. So there are still a handful of grades that have not been able to um, be on campus again. But that is a good sign of what the new school year will bring. Um, and as a school that has not practiced admissions on campus, some of the things that I might share in this conversation today have to do with what is on my mind to begin in the coming months rather than things that I can actually share as someone that's gone through them. So, well, Tina, you gave a perfect segue to our next question. So I'm gonna have you continue on actually, which was describe some of your school's challenges and that have arisen from uh, COVID-19 and then what were some of the actions that have been put into place? So you already mentioned that you've been on week 19 of, you know, of virtual learning. So what were some of the actions that suddenly within admissions and within your role that you had to put in place? Sure, so in the opening days, I think our, our the triage that we, we tried to handle was um, how to set up a remote admissions office. So that was really first and foremost mm -hmm. on our minds. How do we continue to process applications and have buy-in from multiple committee members and share information and receive um, documents and make sure that they're filed in a way that is happening digitally. And I felt quite um, uh, happy about the fact that we could set up an office based on how we do a lot of the work of uh, reviewing files over the summer. Um, 
because we have open committees and, and have a, a, a branch of our, our database that allowed things to be viewed that helped us get a jump start on being able to continue doing that. And yet um, those systems were kind of just piecemealed together still. They certainly weren't set up to, ha to handle the volume of what a full on admission season needed in order to set up a remote uh, office. So, um, Systems and structures were our first, were the first thing that we really needed to, to approach. Mm. Um, at the beginning, thinking it would be temporary, and in the end, realizing that it was a permanent system that we put in place only to need to improve for next year. Right. You know, I think what the power of this conversation is also, at times, uh, this isolation, we feel like some of the problems that we have just in our school are they shared by other schools? So it's nice to hear, you know, systems. Henrietta just mentioned systems as well. I'm gonna move on to David now. Uh, challenges, ISP and some, it could be admissions, could be anything, and how, what were some actions that were put into place? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, I think like Tina, I mean, one of the things that we all had to do was to, to rethink how, how, do we, how do we manage an, an admissions process? Um, virtually. How, all those things that we've become so good at doing in that face-to-face -face encounter. Um, how, how does that happen in a digital space? Um, um, and, and, and I think that, that was in the early days of this. And, you know, maybe if I look a bit more broadly at ISB, um, some of the challenges for us over the last few months have been um, uh, our director left in December. Mm -hmm. um, we thought that that was the biggest uh, uh, mountain that we were going to climb this year uh, and then COVID-19 came uh, and we had another one. Um, so I have a team of advancement people that is a team of 15 and uh, for, for different reasons six of them are leaving this year. So we were in a process of trying to manage a, a switch to this virtual world at a time when, in a sense, as an advancement director, there was, there was really little leadership support above me um, to, to guide some of those things. Um, at a time in which many members of my own team uh, were leaving and also we were committing ourselves to really restructuring the way in which we were going to rebuild this team. And I think, you know, in terms of, I think, a great second half to, of that question, what, what do you do in those circumstances? And exactly. I, think, I think for me, um, what, what I look back and, and was, have been holding on to was one, um, keeping the story straight. Um, the, the story in that kind of environment of, of the school, of what we believe, of what we value, it can go in all sorts of directions. Um, and, and, and I think it was really important to, to be, really be clear about what we were trying to do as a school, what were our priorities, um, and, and to act only on those priorities mm -hmm. and to leave other things and to be bold enough to say, we are going to actively stop doing um, a number of other things. Um, and, and, I think, and I think one of the things in those moments, and, I, and I'm sure we all have felt it, is, is that in a moment of crisis, you go back to not your plans and protocols, but you go back to what you really believe. Mm -hmm. You go back to your values and you reaffirm those values and they will guide you better than your planning and protocols. Yes. Um, and I think that's something that, you know, as I look back and I think we're, we're very much feel as though we're through this first storm, even if there are others that lying ahead um, and, and, we have students returning to campus now, um, and we have a team that has been rebuilt and, and, and so on. And we have much hope for next year. I do think that I, I would say that commitment to this is what we believe um, has, has been absolutely key over the last three months. Yeah, it goes back to who you are. And moving on to Laura, please, in terms of the challenges at Zoom CERN and yeah. some of the actionables. Yeah. So again, I'll, I'll take Thank it. you, David. Yeah, thank you, David, that was interesting. I think I'm going to take it again into a more practical environment because, you know, in admissions, uh, as we all know, we are the, uh, not only the growth engine of the school, 
but we are the, the, the financial heart of the school. So um, we have 42 million francs a year comes in through tuition. So the biggest challenges for us, really, for the general health of the school, was trying to get a handle on the forecasting uh, because of obviously everything that was built around that, staffing and, and, and everything else. Um, managing enrolment, uh, managing not only the inflow of new families, because we, we are seeing a, an, a, actually an unprecedented demand for places at the school, perhaps to do with the fact that Switzerland is generally a safe haven. Mm. Then, of course, dealing with the well-being of our community members who, many of whom had, you know, as part of the enrollment process had already let us know they were leaving uh, and now are having yeah. to stay. And so sort of just got this, we've got this situation, the biggest challenge for us is having a situation which has been so completely fluid on mm -hmm. a daily basis and then trying to support the school, the institution and the leadership in making critical decisions with regards to staffing, uh, uh, with regards to forecasting and, and basically, yeah, and that, that has been a real challenge. And I think um, some, some good things that, some things which have sort of uh, have come out of it, which I think have been really positive as follows. One thing when we look at the team, and uh, never more has it been important to be a team and that we can all step into each other's roles. Mm -hmm. Because my role has become uh, even more strategic than it had been previously. Mm -hmm. And I've had to give off a lot of my normal responsibility and the things I love to do, like meet with families and mm -hmm. that side, to my other team members. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we all do the same job has been really, really helpful. Um, I think that, uh, oh. Again, on the, on the forecasting and the, in the enrollment side, staying really close to source, really keeping your ears open, listening to your community, uh, making calling, 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 call out, call out to of any uh, you know, students who are saying they might be leaving, families telling you, mm. you know, please let us know if they're not already on the withdrawal list. I know it's all very practical stuff, but at the end of the day, uh, of course, making sure that we have healthy enrollment is such an important piece for the institution. So yeah, the biggest challenge for the team, for me personally, has been on trying to give clarity with regards to numbers mm -hmm. moving forward. Uh, and then, um, yeah, and as I say, what's been great is the fact that, um, working in a team where we are all equally mm. skilled at what we do has allowed me to move slightly upwards and off to the side to concentrate on that. I think when you said predictions, a lot of people were nodding. Uh, you can see that a request coming from board members and leadership saying, you know, how do we get more in this grade level? What's happening? Meeting with relocation agents. So there was a lot of nodding when you mentioned that. Yeah. Henry, yeah. Henrietta, how would you yeah, uh, I, I almost don't have so much more to add here because uh, um, also I would say I, I'm, I'm approaching this from the practical level as well as to, to where we are and what we have uh, experienced. I think that um, we have been lucky as a school for the many years, mm -hmm. uh, past years, that we've already always had a, a high demand for the school. Um, and so admissions and numbers were something yes thank you and okay we have delivered some numbers that's great oh we're a little nervous that we might be you know five students down in one grade level so mm -hmm. the fact that we suddenly have an uh, an unknown as to what is this yeah. going to be has definitely gotten the board out of their chair the the you know we've all had to step it up a notch to to deliver that information and to come with the forecast and it's it's I find it nerve-wracking because you have to come out with some predictions and you are, of course, having your ears to the ground exactly as being charts mm -hmm. over what is heard in the classrooms everywhere as to, to what roles, what's, what's uh, going on. We'll have tours with the different relocation agents here in the week coming up. So mm -hmm. to kind of tease out a little bit what's going on, mm -hmm. uh, what's happening in for visa situation, all of this, and, and it's... You know, because as soon as you put this information out and now when it's really crucial and not something that's just, okay, this is a good to know information, 
um, you feel much more, um, you know, responsible for mm -hmm. what is going to, of course, you're always responsible, but it's suddenly been the highlight and, and coming a little bit to later as well as to, yeah, what has it meant? Uh, mm -hmm. The same that you, we, the admissions is su suddenly much more on the spot and pressing yes. and the center of everything, the ambassador, mm -hmm. the, the face of the school mm -hmm. is almost, how do we fix this kind yeah. of question? Yeah. So if, you, so, so if there's a crystal ball out there on Amazon, we'll buy it, you know, to get these predictions because that's how challenging. I mean, so we've been talking about the challenges. I guess I'm going to move, shift it a bit to looking at what are some sources of hope that um, you have seen, you've read about, you've, um, you anticipate to meet the upcoming challenges that uh, you foresee, and I think I'm going to start with Laura on this one. Yeah, I I think um, when we talk about hope, I think again as admissions professionals, we have been put under the spotlight during this last uh, sort mm -hmm. of three months in particular because um, of the, obviously in most schools, board leadership, real concerns about financial viability. So that's an amazing opportunity too to help people understand what we do within the organization, to help people understand the importance of what we do on a daily basis. And I think the one, one of the big takeaways, I was in our board meeting this week with our, with our board, and our director said to me afterwards, you know, uh, basically, Laura, the board have always, you know, obviously know that admissions is important, but now they really know that mm -hmm. it's important. So I think, you know, this wonderful opportunity to have had the spotlight put on to the admissions function within a school, the importance of the admissions function within the school, the opportunity to work with other people within the school collaboratively, sharing mm. data with them, helping them understand how we make decisions, why it's so difficult to, to make forecasts in this time, and gathering and, and basically working, pulling us all together as a team. Mm -hmm. uh, within, within the school and then my, my last thing about hope is uh, again I am privileged to work with a team of two other people three people in admissions mm -hmm. who are highly flexible in their approach uh, and also where there are no sort of egos involved um, and my last thing on this just because I wanted to talk about it before and I forgot uh, you know when we talked about what would it amplify mm -hmm. just very quickly mm -hmm. Uh, when we had recently had an open virtual event, uh, we had 62 people oh. and we had four people on the panel. And I said, I don't want to lead up. I, I'm a director of admissions, but Jenny, my colleague, can you do that? And she was like, well, you know, you're head of department. I said, yeah, but you're 20 years younger than me. This is an early years oh. open day. You take, you know, you step forward. This is your moment to shine. So again, Flexibility, coming together as a team, and I think people realizing how important uh, a good admissions department is. Mm, yeah. Really nice. Tina, I'm going to move to you now. Sources of hope that you might have seen, read, or anticipate with the current challenges? Sure. It's, um, my, my thinking isn't much unlike Laura's. I think, you know, out of, out of, um, great challenge comes opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what I'm witnessing um, from, from my, my parents' basement in Michigan, where I spend most of my time on Zoom meetings now, is that not only is our ISB community coming together in a way that is unique and profound, um, I'm witnessing uh, I'm getting feedback from, from parents who are for the first time witnessing live classrooms while they're, they're peering over their mm. shoulders of their children and realizing the relationships that are in place between their teachers and their child. And um, I think at the, at the end of the day, when the dust settles, hopefully sooner rather than later, this is going to unify and strengthen mm. our community and our brand name at the end of the day um, and build more trust amongst constituencies in a way that will serve teaching and learning and the school for years to come. 
Wow. I'm also mm -hmm. seeing a great deal of hope in that this is happening across the international school commun educators community as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have never seen so many free webinars yeah. or conference opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been on Zoom calls with more of my peer and like school colleagues mm -hmm. more than ever before in the recent past. Mm -hmm. And I think we're all learning together in hyper speed and and being quite generous with what it is that we have gone through in order to make sure that our, our colleagues and community members are, are feeling supported. Mm -hmm. So um, I think as an international school body, we are going to end up, I'm very hopeful that we're gonna end up in a stronger place than we were before this happened as well. Yeah, I agree. I can just tell you the truth. I remember when I first got this position, I was like, where do you go to meet people in community relations? Well, I know I had to go to meet David, so I went to Brussels and that's where I met Laura and it was like a love fest. You know, that was like once a year. And now you can do it like every other week. The, the, it's, it's amazing the opportunities. You can just get some people and say, I need help. And you can have eight people from international schools just help you. David, your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I, I, I feel very hopeful. Um, I'm hopeful because selfishly I'm looking at my own school's enrollment and thinking that as we, we, we were thinking that at one point um, that we were going to go off a cliff in terms of our enrollment uh, next year. That doesn't appear to be the case. It appears that parents still want to educate their children um, and will do a lot to keep their children educated. Um, I'm very hopeful because I think, you know, some of us have been talking about um, reimagining school for a while. And, and now we're having to. Um, and, and, and I feel like, um, you know, when I go back onto campus as I did today, and, and it feels strange to go onto campus, and I actually feel a little bit like, you know, I remember when I left home and I went to university and I came back to my parents' house. It didn't feel like home in the way it used to, because mm. I was different. Yeah. And I actually feel that that, that feeling is what we will be feeling for some time that we've got, we've gone back, but we are somehow changed, mm -hmm. and um, and that makes me very hopeful. And one of the reasons to give an example is that um, I think in missions we we've, we've become quite used to basing our value proposition on the campus. We sell our schools because we have fabulous buildings, mm -hmm. um, we have amazing resources those gyms, those, um, those, those athletics fields, the theatre, um, all that technology. And suddenly, for a period of time, we had none of that. And, and, and maybe, as, as Tina's saying, ironically, we've had to focus on learning again. So we've had to have conversations with parents about what learning looks like, not what our theatre looks like. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know very well how bound up those things are, but I think it's kind of sharpened our, our, our focus a bit to have maybe more authentic conversations with parents about what are you actually purchasing? When you're mm -hmm. buying a school for your kids, what is it you're buying? And I, and I think that conversation has started. Um, it's not always easy because I think parents start saying, well, I did distance learning, therefore I need some money back. And we're saying, no, your child was educated. That's what you're purchasing. And I think I'm, the reason why I'm hopeful is because I think we will end up really knowing through this process what it is that parents are buying um, or what they think they're buying and what we think we're selling. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel very hopeful about that. The last thing I will say, I'm feeling very hopeful because um, maybe, maybe it's just because my own children are speaking to me in a way that they haven't done because they have to be in you know the same house for three months and they couldn't go anywhere but i've had very powerful conversations about learning with them and 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 to actually understand from them how they have become better learners through this process mm -hmm. more independent in some ways uh, more, more articulate about how they learn on campus and at a distance. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I feel like somehow there's in that 
there's, there's, a, there's a formula that we might want to, when we go back to, to campus, really hold on to, because I think that will be the next, as Ewan talks about, mm. the next secret source. Yes. Might make us different mm -hmm. as we move forward. Yeah. No. And I love the idea of looking at what are we selling, you know, you don't have the after school activities, you don't have the uh, niece of sports or whatever. And now it's looking at the learning that occurs in the classroom. Can your thoughts on the hope that you anticipate or see? Yeah, I'll say again, uh, most have been said, I think, uh, by now. Um, my thought was again a bit to, to the families and, and what you said, David, you have experienced at home um, where I thought, and what are we selling and if it's a hope, but I feel what I've experienced through many of my admissions interviews here has been in particular for families where children might be struggling. It's difficult for them to follow what's going on in the classroom, mm -hmm. the learning, uh, it's difficult for them in one way or the other. And we have our applications in where we've seen them and thinking, oh, we'll see how this go. We might be a little bit insecure of this, you know, this admission. And the fact that they have had three months at home with their parents, have had that one-on-one -on -one time and been able to work closely together had brought them so much forward um, mm -hmm. in their learning. And I think that brings back to us that, that this is something we can focus on as a school, the differentiation, the individual learning that, that we, we pre you know, that, that we're doing so much in, in our schools compared to many other schools. I think that, mm -hmm. that it brings hope because many families will have seen that when you have that attention with your children, you can actually do wonders for them. And this is something I think we can use as a school when we're thinking of future sale and what are we about and what what is it that we we're doing and, and mm -hmm. want to, to mm -hmm. promote um and then well again it's also on a very practical level but i also feel i've received a lot of support from the families we've spoken to there, there's a much mm -hmm. a higher flexibility you have tried to explain i cannot guarantee when we start school in august that we are not in some sort of virtual learning. We might be completely out of school. We might do half-half. Uh, we don't know. And I have not, of course, families want to get into school. There's a lot of things they're happy to agree to in those conversations. But, but still, there's been a, an understanding for the common situation that we are all in. And of course, they are ready to support because they trust that the school is actually going to bring them well through this. So I, mm -hmm. I do hope, they want to take my hat of hope on for that. Uh, when you see some of the emails that comes in of families that are asking to have refunds and this and that, that there's, mm -hmm. we're slowly having a community out there that actually understands that, that we can do learning and we will support the families uh, in the future, no matter in which way um, the learning is going to take place. And I love the idea of this hope that the building of communities, we're talking about relationships, we're talking about connection. When I, Laura, you mentioned this a bit about the, the role of admissions. You mentioned that your board is now like, wow, admissions is important. So within this time period, have you seen the role of admissions evolve or change or morph to anything uh, more so than if you were to look at this role a year ago. So, Laura, you started off um, uh, by mentioning the board. I think this is Henrietta's turn to start off, but though Laura did touch on it before in terms of the role of admissions and how it's evolved. Well, again, I, I almost, you said it right there that, that we, um, I mean, we have become even bigger ambassadors for the school. Um, I think very much in collaboration and uh, with the, the communications team. Um, and again, I think it has amplified uh, to go back our, our role in school and how important we are. I, I can only say that um, the focus has been first and foremost on admissions and the communication. How, how do we make sure that we are still present out there in 
the community when we certainly can't show the school, when we can't do our tours, we can't invite people into interviews and, and um, um, I hope it's going to stay like that, that we all listen to, that people, that everybody sees the, the importance of our, our role in school, because we've definitely been amplified throughout the entire process. Definitely. Laura, you want to continue? You, you had a really great, when you mentioned your board, all of us were like, oh yeah, we know the board. Numbers are really important right now. <laughs> really yeah. important. I think, you know, again, I think, now, one of the real strengths that has come out of this, we all work in different environments and we, I think, uh, depending upon the schools we work in, depending upon the environments within those schools, whether you have access to the board, whether you have access to your director, it's going to be different in every mm. environment. So, you know, you can only talk about your own environment. But, um, yeah, what I would, I would say is that um, I think it's incredibly important that your school director and that your board uh, understand the role of, 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 of the admissions function within the school uh, and also all of your staff as well uh, and very much that you are you know you are working hand in hand with everybody else in the community for the success of the institution and that you're not selling you know I don't I don't see ever see myself in admissions as selling the school I genuinely say I hold up a mirror to what's happening in the school mm. and if families connect with that and the real values of the school then then you know that that's that's all we can hope for because then we have people coming into the school who are actually buying the product if you want for, mm. for, uh, for the right for the right reasons yeah, um, but yeah I think it is um, lots of opportunities I think lots of opportunities for admissions professionals to uh, work on their on also how they forecast what they take into consideration not within the COVID situation because that was completely mm. came from nowhere but I do think as professionals one of the areas we you know that's important for us to all work in is understanding our enrollment understanding where it comes from understanding our mm. business what's where, where that's coming from to be able to make um, as accurate predictions as possible given you know the the, the environment that you're in so uh, I just think it's really some great learning opportunities and I know mm -hmm. my team in September when hopefully this part of school has been put behind us or whatever it looks like we will start looking at uh, how we predict numbers uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll do some sort of master work on that on that piece mm -hmm. so last thing We've been back at school for a month already, uh, oh. full-time school. So we're all back on campus and, and I never left campus. I went in on a daily basis. So it's just me and one team member socially distancing. So uh, that's been interesting too. It's lovely to have a campus full of students again, mm. full of teachers. I feel like going back, if we do manage to get back after the summer, that's given us a great bridge to do that. Mm. Thank you. And Tina, what about you? Have you seen your role change or evolve since this? You, I think you said 19 weeks you've been, um, oh, we lost Tina. Bye, Tina. She got sucked in that Zoom again, that black hole of Zoom. She's with David playing cards someplace. Where's, where's Tina? Come back. She saw the light. Come back. David, I will hopefully get Tina back. What about, has anything evolved, you think, in your position or your team in terms of their role? Oh, she's back. Maybe. I see. I'm, I'm worried if I say anything, I'm going to disappear too. <laughs> Tina, come back. What movie was that? <laughs> Let me say something while we wait for Okay, Tina. thank you. Um, I'm not sure that my role or the, the our role as a team has changed mm -hmm. um, too much. Um, but But I do think that I do think there's some, some, somewhere in here, one of the things I've learned is, um, you, you know, I often talk about our role as storytellers for the mm. school. And, and as storytellers, um, our role is to find the words that give hope and courage to people, um, that engage people, that connect with them. And, and, and I think somehow 
our role more than ever through this time has been to find the right words. And, 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 I, and I, one of the things I, I've noticed about the last three months is that people have looked to us to find, to say the right words. And we, the fact is, unless you're all different from me, we don't know what to say because, mm. because we're as anxious too. Um, we're as worried about maybe our health, uh, the health of the school, um, the uncertainties of the future. And, and yet in that moment, we still find ourselves as leaders having to find those words. And, and, and I think that, that's what's changed. It's for me, the importance in this role or in the roles that we have of, of how important those words are yes. to people. Um, and, and that they're not just things we should say lightly. And we have to understand what people are looking, they are looking to us for hope and courage. And even if they are writing letters of complaint or looking for fees mm -hmm. to be returned or being miserable or stressed, it's our role mm -hmm. as storytellers is to provide that source of hope and courage. Mm -hmm. and, and I do think that somehow returning to that has, has, has maybe amplified uh, mm. that, the, 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 our responsibility in that way. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, definitely. And Tina, we lost you for a minute. I can't <laughs> catch a break today. Honestly. It's okay. Now, I'm now on my handheld. For some reason, my laptop won't respond. But I'm glad to be back. Thank um, you so much. Uh, of course. So, um, you know, I, I would say, I would have said, had David not so eloquently done this, is that our <laughs> roles as counselors as mm. people who need to hold the hand of our applicant families especially as they're traveling uh, across borders and around the world in order to make sure that they feel safe and supported and all of that is been needs to be amplified we're going to be running into families who quite frankly are feeling bruised and tattered and and uh unsure and unsafe. And so that, that absolutely is a role that is going to be amplified, if not completely changed. Um, but on the, the more operational side of admissions, I think we too are, our role as playing private detective is going to be a, a important piece of making sure that we continue to enroll mission aligned families. Yes. Um, not all of us are going to have the same struggle as to whether or not families can freely come back on campus. But even if um, borders are open, unlike many in Asia at the moment, um, will, it be, will it be safe? And will people feel safe to travel? So the days of being able to mandatorily require that families come on campus so that you as a school can make sure that they are in alignment with the decisions you're making may be gone or mm -hmm. at least um, needs to be re rethought. Mm -hmm. And even a Zoom conversation leaves you once removed from what that interaction throughout a tour or through an, in, an on-campus mm -hmm. interview can give you. Coupled with the fact that um, I found it particularly challenging to be able to reach out to counselors and teachers when I needed follow-up information throughout the admission season this year. Um, families were having difficulty getting letters of recommendation and teacher reports and things just because of closed schools or overtaxed faculty. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that we're going to need to take on the role of uh, being private detectives, even more so than a usual admission season to make sure that that um, the families that we do admit are families that we can, we can serve and that are going to be positive contributors to our, our, our communities. Well said, I mean, I think all of us can see the changes and I guess now I'm gonna open it up to everyone who's here, who's been listening to the four panelists. Um, we just had uh, something mentioned in the chat. And you can unmute yourself if you want. And really, what is something that resonated with you from, first of all, these four panelists? I'm going to give you a big round of applause for just being fabulous. But 
Yeah, I would do the wave, but when you do it by yourself, you look kind of odd. You need like a stadium of people to do it, so it's not a good look. But is there something that's resonating with you that you heard or you would like to ask a question to the whole group or maybe to one person specifically? So this is your time to unmute if you'd like to and just ask a question or a comment that you would like to um, add to the conversation. So we had somebody, we had ISP from Panama. You had a comment in there about some of the challenges of lockdown situation. I think he froze. He has. He had a really, so those of you, he did freeze. Please take a look at the chat. He put his email address in there looking for um, just some of the challenges he's facing and he also as a parent. So um, please, if you can write back tonight, that'd be really kind. Before we go, I just want to say, we've kind of mentioned this already, the idea of hope, but anybody can answer this. So I always like to end on a positive and I'm going to read this. Every cloud has a silver lining. And we kind of already talked about this in terms of even the worst events uh, brings out some positive aspects. So we already talked about the idea of the collaboration that's happening. For example, learning to, I want to thank you because I went to John and I said, how about something on admissions? And learning to absolutely just said yes. So thank you learning to. I think this is great in terms of elevating the role that we all have at school. And I think just to do things like this, I know um, Brussels and David, we do something every two weeks as well. And those connections I feel are growing the professionals that the capacity we have, the, the collective wisdom is just growing at a monumental rate. And things like this and these other type of webinars to get this collective wisdom, I think it's, it's not only heartwarming, but it just brings us together even more as international educators and professionals. So thank you for being here. I really think it was fabulous. And I stopped a, a little question, bit late. Nancy, uh, Patricia has a question. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. Patricia. Actually, a question and a comment. Hi, Tina. I haven't seen you for five years. I cannot it's believe it. It's too long. <laughs> it's much too long. Sorry about that, everybody else. What I was going to say, Nancy, is that I think this collective responsibility that we all share in each of our different roles has come out for me anyway in the last um, few months. Mm. Um, you know, admissions has their responsibilities. I do too. Um, you know, John and the different uh, areas that we work in, but it's that collective responsibility that we feel now as a school that. I think that if there's any hope that I feel, and I have lots and lots of hope, mm -hmm. is that um, we've become more robust, we have become more committed um, to each other, mm -hmm. and we have become kinder to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that long may it continue um, for us all, yeah. so that we can always tap into the skills and expertise and experience that we have not only in our schools, but this, these skills and expertise that we have today yeah. and in other Zooms that we have and other encounters. So when we do get face to face, if ever Tina, I see you again, uh. <laughs> um, we will have made connections that I think um, will not be broken. And um, that's the hope that I have anyway for the, the future of our work together. That's lovely. And I do hope we do continue. This is something that has to, this is the momentum we need to continue. As, as soon as we get a little break in the summer though, just a little break, <laughs> a little one, tiny one. Does anybody else have something else to share before we say goodnight? You were all wonderful. Henrietta, sorry. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the invitation and for learning to, to invite us in here. I, I truly enjoyed being part of it. Thank you, Nancy, as well. I think it's been um, very giving and inspirational. And I think it's just once again showed us, us all that we are working with the same challenges and we have also all experienced the same level of collaboration and mm -hmm. 
leverage that we have also seen within the school by the collaboration that we've had even within the admissions teams around the world it's been mm -hmm. amazing to whatever you popped out a little question there's always a reply out there within two minutes and so mm -hmm. just wanted to put my gratitude and thank you in, into the community anything else before we say david yeah i you know this is uh, i'll also say thank you this is this is always uh, um you know a joy to see many of you um but it was just a, a small reflection really i remember because you know some of us have been in this job for so many years now um do you remember the days when we used to all meet up together and we used to sit in conferences in hotels in different parts of the world and we would sit in a circle and it would be what we'd call an unconference. Mm. We wouldn't know what to say to one another. And that was the kind of almost definition of unconference. It was an, uh, a nervous conversation. And then someone would pipe up and say, um, so what database are you using in admissions? And that was the level of our professional collaboration <laughs> and conversation. And, and um, maybe I'm saying that because I, if there's, if nothing else, the level of authentic conversation that mm -hmm. we are having as expressed by tonight and so many of those other conversations we're having these days, I do think that it's a different, it's a different level. And yeah. I think we have to remind ourselves of where the profession of admissions has come from in, in, in the 15 years that I've been involved in it mm. um, and, and, and the professionalization of the industry. Um, and the level of conversation so you know maybe that's just a little for me a sign of hope thinking back to those hotels in with funny carpets and all the <laughs> any other goodbyes or yeah. comments laura yeah i'd like to uh, echo what david said you know um it's such a joy to be able to be with a group of people who um, are as proud of their profession as I am and who value what they do and value the communities they, they work in and the level of professionalism within admissions advancement across international schools in the 10 years that I've been involved has just grown astronomically and uh, it's just again it's fantastic that we get these opportunities um, because when I went into this area 10 years ago looking for professional development opportunities was so difficult mm. uh, there was a lot out there for for, for, for for educators but very little for people in this area so again a, a shout out to everyone and kudos to everyone for continually upping our game looking at ways to you know to improve what we do and and, and the long may that continue mm. hopefully we have to keep it going it's up to us I just yeah. want to uh, extend my gratitude to Nancy for pulling in these uh, guests and, and everybody getting together. Thank you, Nancy, for your facility. Loved it. Just know these uh, sessions are recorded as so's the chat, and we will release that through our Learning to Europe site. Just look for virtual threads, and I'll make sure Nancy has the link. And just want to thank all of you for coming in and sharing your expertise and wisdom. These are very rich conversations. And I know when we record this, we get quite a large audience afterwards. So we look forward, hopefully, to hearing back from you uh, here in, in the fall as we come back, hopefully, to something that we recognize. But even if we don't recognize it, I think we're very well equipped uh, to take on anything because anybody that's gone through what we have, I think, <laughs> has only become more resilient. And uh, I want to thank Nancy, uh, Henriette, David, Laura and Tina for uh, sharing your expertise tonight on behalf of Learning Too. Yay. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. Have a great Take Sunday. Take care. Bye.